Hello, this is Mr. Wedge, and today we're going to work more on our ah, Australian Aboriginal X-ray style animal. Yeah! <laughs> anyway, uh, we haven't talked about symbols yet, but we're going to add some Aboriginal symbols to this. So sometimes when you look at an Aboriginal painting, it'll have different designs and shapes, but that a lot of the time they're going to actually stand for things. Like you might see you know, I've got a, a picture of an animal here. You might see this design that goes across. It looks something like this. Like the letter E over and over again. And these actually represent the tracks of the animal. So it's almost like I'm using these symbols to tell a story. And you might see another symbol that looks like something like this. And this symbol just means, that symbol in, in Aboriginal culture would mean a group of trees. So I'm sort of telling a story about my animal using symbols. And they just kind of look like shapes or designs. And they are. But they should be connected to your animal and they should kind of tell a story. So you, you can make that up. But I've got, you know, a Tasmanian devil running and when I encountered it, it was running by a group of trees. I can't color those in. But I'll just kind of think of this as one big shape. and But I can color this one in. So if you can color things in, go ahead and color it in. I'm just using oil pastels for this. So at least two symbols. Color it in as best you can, if you can. And uh, we're also going to do dot painting today. Dot painting is one of my favorite ways to paint. It's so much fun. We're going to need a big brush. But we're not going to use this end. We're going to use the wrong end on purpose. And we're going to use that. In Australia, they'd use a rounded stick. But we're going to use the wrong end of the paintbrush. So get a big brush. It's round on the end. And that's going to be perfect for dots. So here's a paper plate. I've got a little bit of paint on it. You don't need much. And we're going to use the wrong end of the brush. Dip it in the paint. Find the edge of something. And we're going to go around things. So I'll go around my symbol here. So I just make a dot and then I get more paint. And dot, paint, dot, paint, dot. And I'm going to work right around my symbols that I did. And I'm also going to work right around my animal that I did. So I'll do, I'll just pick one color to start with. And I'll go right around everything that I've drawn so far. But think of it as one big shape. You could go up in between here if you want, or you could just go around it. I'm just going to go around the whole big thing. There we go. I, I outlined that one with dots. And now I'm going to go all the way around my uh, Tasmanian Devil with this one color. So I'll catch you in a second. Alrighty, so now that I've gone around everything, I can uh, switch to a different color. So I've made a row of orange dots all the way around everything that I drew. And I just kind of outlined it with dots. But I'm going to keep going because we want to fill up all the black with dots. We want to get rid of all of that. So uh, you don't need a bucket of water or anything to wipe your brush. Just uh, use a tissue and get the paint off. And I'm going to switch to a different color. So you can pour the paint, but once you finish one, get more paint. So don't get all your colors at first. Just finish a row and then get more colors. Because there's no point in pouring eight piles of paint and getting this much done and then having to throw all of that away. So finish a row and then get another color when you're ready. I just want to show you a couple uh, tricks and tips. So if I'm working over here around the head of my Tasmanian Devil, I'm going to get paint and make a dot and get paint and make a dot. And yes, this does take a long time. There's no like other way to do it than this. But uh, here's a little trick. Do you see how I'm working over here? If I move my paint and turn the plate so it's like right next to where I'm working, I can go paint, dot, paint, dot. Do you see how much faster that goes? So there's a little trick. I think this goes way faster. I can get this done really quick. If I And I'll just keep moving my paint to where I'm working. It just goes way faster. So there's a little tip for you. Also, you might be tempted to go like this. 
but do you notice how the dots just disappear? And we want all these dots to be the same size. It's what gives it rhythm and pattern and, and uh, unity. So paint, dot, you've got to do that that way every time. So keep moving your plate to where it's close, to where you're working, so you don't have to move your arm back and forth like that. But you can, you can use that trick to your advantage. You're an artist. So do you see how the legs, there's a little space in between them right there? I can get some paint on my brush and then go dot, 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 and it'll fill in that little space there. And you'll see Aboriginal artists do that too. It's just a trick. If you've got a tiny space to fit in and it get, comes to a point, you could just go dot, 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 and fill it in that way. But the rest of the time, you really should be going paint, dot, paint, dot. You want it to look as good as you can get it. So if you've got a place where it looks like the paint's not going to be able to fit in there, then you're going to go paint, dot, paint, dot, paint. And I, it doesn't look like I could get in there, so I'm not going to try. I'm just going to keep going. So it'll actually get, you're, as you fill up the space, you're going to have less and less space to do. So that'll make it go faster, too. So there's a couple little tricks for you. So it's up to you what colors you use, but big brush, use the wrong end, work hard, and have fun.